So let's talk about Cubes OS, the most secure operating system out there, and it goes over what's called Cubes or compartmentalization as far as the security concept of this OS. It's extremely advanced and not for regular users. I'm just going to come out and say that. So if you're, uh, you know, have problems with installing Windows or basic Linux concepts, Cubes is definitely not for you. So with all of that, I'm going to do a basic install config and then just showcase the concepts of cubes with launching applications how everything's segregated out and and show you general application now this is just for like web browsing and file browsing for this video the next video i'm going to go over actually installing applications and maintaining cubes is in such a fashion to where you can do it and uh spoiler alert on this one this is extreme resource hog. So if you have a little itty bitty laptop or just a menial PC, forget about it. You need a beast to run cubes because it's basically running all these different operating systems in the background. So you definitely need a lot of memory, anything less than 16 gigs, just forget about it. Uh, as far as processors, quad core at an absolute minimum, I would highly recommend an octa core or higher for this type of thing. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the install and config of Cubes OS. This video is brought to you by SkySilk. Affordable pricing, simple automation, scaling, and VPS deployment tools carefully designed to offer resources that fit any project. Their pricing starts as low as $2 a month and I've used them personally for about the past six months to host a Minecraft server. Link is in the description. All right, here we go. We're gonna install Cubes OS. I've already put it on a thumb drive using the latest testing release. Uh, please note Cubes OS does run a little older on the kernel, so you pretty much want the testing release if you want any kind of newer uh, software on your system. So that's what I'm using on this one. Let's go ahead and power it up. All right, we'll hit F11. And we're gonna try UEFI install. If we have problems with this, then we'll switch back to legacy. That's just kind of how I do almost all my installs, just so you get a little taste of that because I've had some issues with UEFI, especially when installing Linux OSs. Uh, I remember the last one I had issues with was with uh, Pop OS, where I actually defaulted back to legacy. All right, so that wasn't a strong start. We got just a black screen with absolutely nothing this could be doing with the older kernels and i'm using an rx 580 to power this possibly uh so let's go ahead reboot and try legacy all right we're going to install cubes os here we're using r4.0.2 rc1 all right looking good so far this is based on fedora that's why it looks a lot like fedora uh, I really love Fedora, by the way, so um, I have no issues with that. Let's go ahead, change our time zone. We're over in Chicago. Uh, oh, that's Winnipeg. Chicago's down here, Chris. Learn your geography. All right, we got that. Installation, local source, everything else looks pretty good. All right, so here is our default uh, installs. I wish they gave you more as far as what you, else you can put on here. We'll hit done here. We'll do it. Installation media. We're going to do this one right here. Uh, solid state drive. We're going to wipe out my old install on here. I don't want to encrypt my data and say I would like to make additional disk space available. And we'll hit done. And then we'll say, hey, here's all this stuff. Now, this was an uh, old Windows install, it looks like. So we're just going to hit delete all and then reclaim. So it's going to do automatic partitioning. As far as those partitioning, let's take a peek at that because I don't like to use LVM a lot of times and a lot of times that's exactly what they do. So um, let's take a peek at the partitioning. Uh, yeah, it, it wants to use LVM thin partitioning. Let's see what that does. So by default, it's really not doing anything crazy. It's adding a boot partition everything else is in root and then it's creating an eight gig swap partition um the swaps probably not needed but we're going to be doing a lot of virtual machine and compartmentalization so i'm actually going to leave swap in here just as a fallback probably not going to need it though 
But if we do, it's there. So these are all the things we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and say accept changes. We'll say begin installation. All right, so that install's done. Remember, this is a big install. This was almost a five gig download for the ISO. And the install itself took me almost 10 minutes, which is kind of crazy on this system as I installed like server 2019 in about three minutes in comparison. So this might take you 30 minutes to an hour on slower systems. Like their little startup screen, the grub bootloader, I kind of enjoy a customized grub bootloader. I made a video about doing that, but it's nice that Cubes just does it automatically for you. All right, here we go. We'll click on this and we'll see what we got. We could create default system cubes. This is a little small text here. Create default application, uh, create Hunix gateway and workstation, enable system and template updates over Tor for anonymity. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna use Tor unless I have to. And we'll just show done. So we're gonna do pretty much the default install, uh, uh, default configuration, I should say. So let's see what happens. I think it's gonna configure Fedora and then also Debian here. So we're gonna have two different ones. We're also gonna be adding Windows in and some other ones. This should be kind of cool. I would love to use this as my daily driver. So I'm, I'm really curious to see what all we can do uh, to make that happen. I, I have to mention during the middle of this install, I'm looking at it and I gotta say um, the progress bar is kind of non-existent. It's just kind of like stuck in the middle to where it's saying configuring template VM. It'll go through like the gateway, uh, Debian 10 and Fedora. So it was very interesting during this part look at your system make sure you have hard drive activity because i had to look over and go oh okay their progress bar is broken uh, during this install it looks like but it does look like it's installing it's just taking again a very long time for such a beefy system like this is eight core 16 threads and we're about 10 minutes into the configuration now so uh that's a bit long as far as the actual setup process so on a lower system, this will take probably upwards of an hour uh, to do cubes. So I want to go ahead and put that out there. During the configuration, I didn't anticipate this taking this long. All right, so we're finally done here. We'll go ahead and hit finish install or finish configuration. And we are in. So here is our cubes desktop. It's XFCE. And guess what? You can't connect this to the internet. You'll see this little red thing up here. You can't really do anything to the base system. This is the foundation. It has no network connectivity. It's pretty much how it is. So they do this so you don't launch user land uh, applications and other things on your system. They want everything compartmentalized. So just know that if you pop into system terminal up here and go DNF update, it's going to fail every time because guess what? you don't have a network adapter your network adapters and there's nothing wrong with it just know that by default it hides the network adapter from the the base system which is called dom zero so i wanted to go ahead and get that out of the way and just kind of explain some of the cubes now some people would think oh they just launched vms and that's it now i would have loved if that was it but it's not there's it goes far deeper in that this is the inception of operating systems. I've never seen anything quite like this in my life. Please note, it does require a ton of resources. I have 16 gigs of memory, and once I install Windows and really get this up and going, this is going to be one of the heftiest installs I've ever done because I'm going to have a whole bunch of cubes running and each one of those is still a virtual machine and it still relies on a lot of memory. So if you have less than 16 gigs, don't even bother installing Cubes OS unless you're running real minimal uh, installs. I would just stick with what they have here, which is uh, I'll get into the actual virtual machines it comes with. The virtual machines it comes with uh, using the latest version of Cubes OS would be Debian 10 and Fedora 30. Note, these are just template VMs, meaning the actual 
things you launch your applications out of don't run off of the template VM. They actually run off of what's called domains. And that's what you'll see this in the startup. You'll see all these domains and other things. Now, services also have their own cubes. So you have your domain cubes and your service cubes and your template cubes. Confused yet? I sure as hell am. All right, so at the first level, we're gonna say this is a floor, uh, just like a, a building to go up to, a good analogy. So the first is the foundation, that's what we're on right here. The first floor would be our template VMs, which is assigned to all of the other cubes. Without the template VMs, nothing else could run, so that's like our first floor. Then you go up another level and you have your services. The services are basically what all your cubes are gonna run through, all your applications are gonna run through these services and the services are like sys firewall sysnet and there's a couple other in here as well but you get the idea now this on top of that so that's your second layer <laughs> and then your third layer is going to be the actual cube that runs your applications it's going to go ahead and go down all the way through to get out so it's going to first go to your services layer get everything it needs go down to the next one and say okay what operating system am I on and then go out so that's the the structure of cubes it's all compartmentalized um and that means both the network meaning one cube can't talk to another via network also means hardware is compartmentalized meaning you can't assign one hard drive over here and you absolutely have to give it to that cube for it to have access such as uh, let's go ahead and launch something here i think i have like a personal files we can go ahead and throw that up now it doesn't have anything if you come up in the top right you could assign this now actually i think i already did assign this but let's go ahead and reassign it and see if it can pop up now i've noticed a lot of it doesn't hot swap so well so this is extremely technical. To get this working, um, I'm not impressed. But to say the least, it's a cool concept. So I could technically launch into personal, terminal, and then we could probably go into devices and see this hard drive. So let's go ahead and do just sudo fdisk-l. Let's see what all it sees here. Here is a 1.8 terabyte drive. It's this is the device name. It doesn't look like it's mounted or anything. Let's go ahead and check our mount points after this, but I'm gonna go ahead and copy it. And to check our mounts, we'll just do a disk-free human readable and see if we see the that XVDI. So I don't see that in here, so we could easily mount this. Uh, let's go into a media directory, make directory 2TB. And we'll need to do this sudo and then we'll need to mount it here sudo ch own user user 2tb and then we can mount the dev x vdi to media 2 terabyte so we've mounted our drive after giving it access let's uh go other locations linux data and there it is this is an older computer I had that has a whole bunch of stuff on it, like games and other things located on this drive. That was a little ridiculous to get access to it, but at the same time, it was extremely secure. So with the drive going, let's also kind of showcase the compartmentalization. Now that you kind of understand the structure, we could easily come into here, uh, launch Firefox from this one. And then we could also launch, let's say, an untrusted, let's say we weren't like going to a shady website. We could actually go ahead, launch this. You can see that uh, cube launching and starting in the background and it'll launch into Firefox that way. A little bit of a delay there, but to be expected. But these are two completely separate entities or cubes that can't talk to each other. If I downloaded a virus and ran it from here, it wouldn't affect anything else on this computer. I would just literally come into here, shut down this cube, and it would just go away. So that's kind of cool. Or let's say the cube gets really messed up. I don't know how well, uh, once a cube gets extremely infected, if you would need to delete it. On the untrusted ones, I wanna say that's like almost a read only, so I think it'll dump it. It's a disposable cube, which I think that's how they actually set it up here at the top. And it'll basically anything you do will just 
dump it in the trash in theory. I haven't actually tested that out, but that's kind of what those are. But that's the power of it as far as flipping around and stuff. Um, it's very interesting. I would set up these by default. XFCE does four workstations. So I would probably like say, okay, I'm doing personal stuff and I would go ahead and push this to workstation two. So I'd go this one, push this to two, push this one to two. And I'd put all my cube stuff on workstation four. And then I'd go, okay, workstation two is my personal workstation four is just my cube for uh, doing this and that. So I could see what all is going on with the actual system. And then if I was going to do something else, I'd pop over to this workstation and let's say all my untrusted or uh, shady stuff I would put in here that I just didn't quite do. I'd put it in an untrusted one. And then if I wanted to separate untrusted personal and then have like work, you can do this. Now by default, they actually had something called home on top of this. Um, the cube OS team has just gone overboard with it. I think uh, it's extremely way too many cubes uh, out of the gate, uh, just using the stock install. I went ahead and deleted the home cube because I was just like, that's just too much. But with this, there's, there's other stuff we need to do. We need to install programs and apps and other VMs such as Windows. And I'm gonna do a follow-up video with that. I just kinda wanna toy around this a little bit more. I wanted to show the basic concepts of cubes, how it operates, how everything is segregated out into its own, not only its only own VM, but its own cube, and how all that works. None of it talks with each other. It's extremely security-oriented, which is great, but at the same time, it takes a little bit to get used to. But I wanted to show just the states and this. So so with that, I'm going to talk a little bit more about my initial thoughts of Cubes OS. So this is the basics of Cubes as I saw it. Now, this is my first day using it, so there might be some stuff that might be a little bit off, but I wanted to get just kind of the gist of it, my initial thoughts of Cubes. I got to say, I am extremely impressed with its compartmentalization and its security. That's really, really incredible. However, I'm very let down by its usability and I think most average users should never use this just because it's horrible as far as that section goes. Most people don't want to drop the terminal. Most people don't want to do a lot of the things that are just required to maintain cubes and also having a complete understanding of how uh, the compartmentalization works and how to update and maintain cubes. That's a whole different video. That's, that's a very taxing thing on a person to do. So I'm going to do a follow up video going over some of the upkeep and maintenance you need to do with cubes and then also installing applications. And then that's probably going to be my last video on cubes because overall, I, I just don't see a widespread appeal to it. I know a lot of people have asked about it as Edward Snowden and other people in the security industry has spoke highly of cubes and I can see why. But at the end of the day, nobody's going to use this on a massive scale. It, it's just not there. And I don't think it ever will be. It, there's a lot of functionality in the background and the very, very complex structure that you really have to have an understanding of to utilize cubes properly. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. As always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.